What's good, y'all? Welcome to my first impressions for Secret Invasion. Just finished the first episode, and overall, I loved it. It was a fantastic episode, man. I'm very much excited for the rest of the series. Now, before we jump right into the main actual episode itself, get into my thoughts and everything, man, um, I will say this. Let's quickly address probably the biggest source of, like, uh, controversy that's been happening with this episode uh, since it aired earlier today, and that is... The intro. As you guys may know, the a the intro was AI generated. Now, apparently, this wasn't a case where some Marvel exists just throw some ra threw some random shit into a machine and called it a day. There were artists that worked on it, more or less. They were just using AI. They were using concept art and then put it through whatever AI machine they were using to create the intro, as we saw it in the actual show. Now, obviously, people are complaining or a lot of people are shitting on it. It's like, oh, it's AI. Yeah, I could never. Blah 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 blah. Humans are better. Blah 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 blah. Now. I will say this about the intro real quick. While I completely, un and this is kind of my whole thing with AR art and just in general, I completely understand artists, you know, disdain for it, and obviously what this what it could lead to the future with, you know, them not hiring artists, just going through the machines because it's cheaper and easier, blah, 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 blah. I get all that. But in my personal opinion, at least to me personally, I like AI art. I think it's kind of cool, and I'm personally kind of fascinated by it. And overall, I just kind of like, and I like the look of it. I kind of like looking at it, like, yes, yes, you know, I like seeing my big anime titties, you know, because there's a lot of, like, anime, like, fan art I've seen of, like, AI, anime girls, you know, that use the AI generated art thing. But me personally, I like it. I'm personally kind of fascinated by it, and I overall kind of like the, and I, and I like it, man. That's just my personal opinion, you know. Obviously, people that just, you know, take random artwork and then just shove it through a machine and call it a day, and they may be able to pay for it. Yeah, that's bad, but, like, as long as they stay in their lane, I don't see the harm in it. At least in theory, anyway. Obviously, in practice, you know what this could lead to is a different story. Now, on to the intro itself. Same thing applies here, man. I thought it was cool. I, I really liked the intro, man. And I overall thought it was cool, man. Sure, you know, I saw um, Brown Table retweeting a quote retweeting something and some other people might say, sure, could they have hired a, a, a team of artists and they could have given you the same style that they were kind of going for, that maybe uncanny value thing they were going up with given the concept and the theming of the show about scrolls and like, you know, who can we trust? This, that, and the third. Sure, absolutely. He mentioned the Jessica Jones intro you know, doing a similar thing, which I don't think quite is similar enough because Jessica Jones' intro was more or less trying to recapture the magic of, or, re or recapture the look of the of her original comic run by um, the artist that Benjamin's work on that I love his artwork, man, but I'm slipping on his name. I love the dude's artwork, though, and that's what they are going for. Well, I feel for Sir Vision they were going for a different look in time, but similar, and I can see where he was getting with it. But, yeah, I personally like the intro, man. I thought it was cool, and, yeah, that's my opinions on AI art, if you were wondering, man. I'm kind of fascinated with it, and I think it's, and, I, and me personally, I think it's kind of cool. That's just me. <laughs> anyway, let's just jump right into the actual episode itself. So the star shows Emily Clark, Kobe, uh, Smulders, if I'm pronouncing her name right, uh, Samuel L. Motherfucking Jackson, Ben Mendelsohn, Shaw, I know you pronounced that last name, Olivia Coleman, and many more. And the plot of Secret Invasion is Nick Fury leads a secret invasion on Earth by a faction of shape-shifting scrolls. Fury joins his allies together and they race against time to thwart an immediate skull invasion and save humanity. Now, the cast overall we'll be seeing this first episode is great. Samuel L. Jackson is, of course, fantastic. Marina Hill. Uh, Kobe Smulders, Smulders, how you pronounce her name, uh, is great as always as Marina Hill. But Samuel L. Jackson, man, man, was the highlight this episode, man. Like, I feel like at this point... In the MCU, Samuel Jackson is no longer playing Nick Fury. Samuel Jackson is playing Samuel motherfucking Jackson at this point, bro. Like, <laughs> Samuel Jackson was a highlight of this episode, man. Like, there's this one time when they're invading, when they're interviewing, when they're interrogating this one scroll, and he's like an artist on the. And then Samuel Jackson just grabs a chair and takes a seat. He's like, hey, don't sit there. That's an ancient chair. He's like, it's from like, uh, fucking, what was it, Louis the 15th or something like that. It's like, oh, you got any more Louis the 15th chairs? <laughs> like there's things like that, bro. And Samuel Jackson, he's just amazing of the entire episode, man. Like I love Samuel Jackson, and he's amazing in this episode as always, man. The rest of the cast that was great as well. I thought the music overall in this episode we really saw of the of the soundtrack was really good as well. I mentioned I really like the intro of this of this show, man. Um, which I'm sure is probably gonna be a bit of a controversial take, but you know, I mean, I liked that. I thought it was cool. I liked the style they were going for, and I think it works. That's just my personal opinion. Anyway, so um, that was great, man. But I also really liked. Uh, the directing this episode mostly like most specifically in like the opening like 
10, 20 years from answer or so, whatever it was, where we're actually following Agent Ross uh, throughout that early part of the episode, which I think is like, I mean, this is the first time we've actually seen Agent Ross outside of the Black Panther movies for the first time in the, in the MCU. I could run that maybe he had like a cameo or an appearance in another MCU project for game, but I'm pretty sure this is the first time we've seen Agent Ross outside of the Black Panther films. Could run that one, but it was pretty cool to see him. But I love that section when we really get to see like, you know, this one agent that's like, that is like convinced about the scroll threat that they have invaded and that they're like, and he has like these conspiracy theories about the scrolls. And I thought the overall, just the directing of this, they had some really nice drone shots. There was a chase scene, which also was really well shot. I thought the directing throughout that whole, uh, that whole first part of the episode was just really well done. Man. I really like what they did with that earlier part of the episode, man. Another thing I also, I also, also kind of like about this episode is just the overall vibe of this episode, where they're definitely like leaning heavily into like, oh, you don't know who you can trust, who is a scroll, and who isn't, you know? I like we see that earlier on in the first episode where they're already hitting you with some curveballs but we see that later on in the episode as well and I like it man it's keeping me on my toes I'm like you know you don't know who's a trust like oh who's a scroll who is that scroll is that person a scroll is that person not a scroll it's cool I think it's been working really well in this first episode and I'm curious to see how they're going to build on that throughout the other um, another five episodes I believe this is another six episode miniseries if I remember correctly so I'm curious to see how that's going to play out throughout the re remaining uh, five episodes when we see that because I like what they're doing overall and I also kind of like what they've been doing with Nick Fury character where they definitely been building this off off the blimp where you know guys know Nick Fury got blimped at the end of Infinity War and Melfi are saying like he has been the same since he's you know kind of been going off with Strike and doing his own thing on the, on that on that base which we're going to see more of that in the Marvels and that comes out later this year and I thought it was kind of an interesting cause that they're going to go with Nick Fury about him is he is he you know the same person has he lost his touch since the events of Avengers and of, of Avengers Infinity War so I mean and I kind of like what they've been doing with this episode man I'm kind of curious how they're going to build upon that throughout the remaining part of the episode of uh, the episode now one thing that i found that was a little bit concerning about me when i was watching uh, while I was watching the episode actually, is that I found a tweet where actually the screenwriter behind the show admits that that he was told not to read the original comic, uh, which you guys know, the, you know, the Secret Invasion comic, the major adventures, which I believe actually Benders actually wrote that one as well, um, uh, was told not to read when he was writing this story. Now, obviously, it was a little concerning about that because, you know, it's a big, massive event. But then again, uh, Platinum replied to me, actually replied to my tweet, telling me, like, oh, you know, wanted to go in a different direction. But that's also not inherently a bad thing, because you guys may not know, with the original X-Men movies, Brian Singer told, you know, the actors to not read any X-Men comics when they were making, I believe, the first two films, or just at least the first one. So, and you know, those first two X-Men movies are fantastic. So, obviously, a director or a writer not going back and reading the original story material uh, when they're adapting it isn't inherently a bad thing. And to be fair, how much of the original of the original event book can they really adapt? Considering, you know, uh, at least from my understanding, I could be wrong on this one, but Secret Invasion was like this big, massive Avengers-level event with like Mary, with like the various different Marvel characters going on there, and it was like and it was featuring the Avengers, and it was definitely like an Avengers-level event book. It was an event book. It was like one the big event books i think this one i think it followed it was like you know like civil war level type event book where it was like basically affecting the entire marvel universe uh at that time in the comics so realistically how much of that can you adapt when you're kind of like going it from which is what, what i think what this was brought with a serious what this probably would should have been being a major like being the next uh event avengers film being this one rather than going with king dynasty and everything rather than making this own like its own little mini series in the mcu focusing on nick fury realistically how much of that can you realistically adapt and I feel they are, I haven't read the book myself, but I actually do have it on my Comixology account. I met, I've actually been meaning to read it, man, so I'll probably wait till after I'm done with the, till after the series end, then I'll probably read it. Because uh, I've been wanting to read it for a while now, I've been kind of curious to see how that turns out, how the original comic was uh, for that. But, yeah, that's a little concerning, but given this first episode, I've created this first episode once, man, I think it'll turn out fine. That's just my personal opinion. And also, you guys know, I also wasn't a big fan of when they changed the logo, man. I honestly thought the original logo, which was basically ripped right from the original uh, comics logo, I thought it looked a little bit better. But given the flo the look and feel for the show of that they're going for this movie, or the show, excuse me, I think it overall works. And I think the poster that they have going with it with Nick Fury's face and, like, like the little blinds going in there making, like, one of his eyes look like a scroll line, man. 
I thought it looks pretty cool. So I think it kind of works with it going, but I do definitely prefer the original logo, if you ask me. Now, in terms of any like, problems I had with this first episode, man, um, I there was the way it just came out where like they would introduce certain characters and kind of like expect and it just it felt like they expected you to already know who these people are and not really introduce them. Um, like we have with uh, Talos's daughter gets introduced in here, and you know there's another character that makes it feel like that we're supposed to know who these people are, but. I don't. Now, you know, you know, it's a, I'm pretty sure the last time we might have saw any of these characters was in Captain Marvel, which was like four years ago at this point, man. And it's not like, I'm not, not like I was ever in any real rush to rewatch the movie. I would just probably prefer if they had like a little bit of a little mini recap or kind of explain like who these people are and like what were their last appearances and just to refresh my memory. But like, oh, okay, this is this character because there were times where I'm like, who are you talking about? Who is this? Why should I care? What this? Who? Like, you know, it's probably just my memory because it's been so long since Captain Marvel, but I feel like because it's been so long since Captain Marvel, a little recap wouldn't have hurt. You know, just to like refamiliarize ourselves and refresh our memories on who certain characters are. Because there are some characters in here where I'm like, am I supposed to know who you were? Were you in Captain Marvel? Like, what's going on there? But yeah, well, well, yeah, but yeah, that's about the only thing I had really an issue with with this first episode, man. Also, the ending was. Quite shocking if you know if you watch the episode and you guys know what I'm what I mean by that. I'm not gonna get into spoilers, but yeah, definitely wasn't expecting the ending of this episode. <laughs> no sir, man. But yeah, man. Overall, I love this episode, man. I'm hyped up to see the rest of the series. And yeah, overall my final verdict for this episode is going to be a nine out of ten, guys. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, subscribe for new, follow me on my social if you feel like it. Links to drops below. And as always, come back for more. See you guys next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah.